All right, uh, let's uh, look at the story further with uh, Dr. Llewellyn Kerr Lewis, a senior lecturer in criminal and procedural law at the University of Pretoria, and uh, Professor Sipo Siebe, a political analyst. So good afternoon to you, and thank you so much for your time to you both. I'll begin with you, uh, Dr. Kerr Lewis. The minister is taking the report on judicial review. Did he jump the gun? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, and uh, good, eve good afternoon to everybody. Uh, yes, I do think... Uh, Mr. Leguidi Mantaj is uh, jumping the gun. Um, obviously, one would expect uh, everybody involved to, to first to wait until the final, let's call it the chapter of the report is available, and uh, which should be the end of April before they consider their options. Um, I, will note, I will not be surprised if there's more than one individual, including Mantaj, that uh, intends to bring an application to the High Court at some stage, take certain parts or even certain... Uh, uh, aspects of the various parts of the Zonder report on uh, judicial review. But for now, uh, the mere fact that he is being implicated in the Bosasa uh, uh, situation, part three, which is, consists of four volumes, if you ask me, all, almost a thousand pages uh, involving that chapter, uh, I, I think he must be, uh, because he's implicated, I think he's currently on, on, on hot plate, like a uh, at an art tin plate, and maybe you should just wait a, bu a bit and see what how things play out before he approaches the court. Because once you approach the court, courts expect you to once and for all include all your issues with the various supports and only apply once for such a should have been. Given what you're saying now, uh, Dr. Colonel Lewis, can we see a situation where the courts say that uh, those who are probably might follow suit and take this particular, you know, the reports on judicial review, including part one and part two, could we see the courts saying that they must wait for all the volumes to be released first? Look, there, there, there might be instances. Um, say, for example, the first part that predominantly uh, deals with uh, Mignani's uh, participation in the alleged state's corruption. I mean, if, if no mention is made in the rest of the remainder of the reports, then by all means, go ahead to the court because there are, will not, not be any other incriminating evidence uh, perceived against you. But uh, I will be surprised if there might not be in the final chapter further suggestions or recommendations or even implications of some of these individuals mentioned, maybe even including Gwedi Mantash. So, um, why jump the gun? There's more than enough time for them to consider approaching the court. Uh, and in due course, and that we are talking about another two months waiting period here. All right. Uh, so I'm going to wait. Let, uh, Prof. Siapa, let me come to you. He says that the investigation will not find anything and uh, that the commission also defers this matter for further investigation. Of course, it says that it must be further investigated to establish whether there's a prima facie case here. But he also continues to say that this report, and this is a repeat, of course, of a remark we heard, um, you know, before, where he says that this report must not be used as a witch hunt by comrades. He also then, um, interestingly, says that there's no need for him to step aside because there hasn't been any prima facie case that has been established here. Your thoughts? Well, Mr. Mantasha was quoting what comes from the report. And the report is very clear that uh, further investigation might uh, unveil evidence that will make a case. So he's actually correct to have pointed out to that line. Because uh, if uh, the Zondo Commission and the, uh, the, Chief the acting Chief Justice had uh, a full proof or had enough evidence, he would not be referring these matters to further investigation. So he already enters his uh, summation with a, almost not a, a, with a sense of doubt. Because uh, what you have there is uh, almost like I can see there's something wrong, but uh, I have not arrived to a position where I could say, charge him. So what I'm saying is that uh, go and make further investigation. And it may well be that uh, if we now have the full report, it might also link to this uh, uh, installment. That is also possible. This is why one should not jump the gun and wait. If somebody says to me that I suspect this, which is what uh, the chief, chief just says, that there's a strong suspicion 
that you might have benefited or that you may have been involved in corruption. And Mantasha's position has always been that at the time when there were those upgrades in his space, which he never denied, he was not in government. So the, but the, the, that issue is something that Zondo was trying to point out that the, the party itself was a beneficiary because there were people who were getting tenders through association. And I thought, I thought mm. he had actually made that very clear that had the Musasa not uh, been in close proximity with the ANC and almost rewarding them, it does almost like kickbacks. So what, what do you do? You go to the people who control the party. So, and, but the, to show a direct uh, line of kickbacks is something that the court will have to be uh, convinced. But Prof, at the moment, uh, the Chief Justice has not made a case. Pardon me, Prof. Uh, you talk about the fact that he wasn't in government. Of course, he's not the only one that has been mentioned in this, this report. Let's talk about somebody who is also in government who's had some scathing remarks against him. Deputy uh, Defence Minister Tabang Magweta, um, the report is saying that, and this is, of course, in relation to security upgrades as well, he had told the Commission that he doesn't see a conflict of interest in relation to this particular issue, despite, the, you know, all the, uh, the, the clearing conflict that may have been there. Now, the report says if this is true, it means that he should not be occupying such a senior position in government. It means also in the department in relation to which he is deputy minister, he would advise, for example, the director general and others that there is no conflict of interest in situations where there are seriously some clear interests. I remember the president saying that there are going to be instances where he's not going to, be, to wait when there is clear evidence that is presented by the State Capture Commission. Looking at what that has been said about the Deputy Minister, can the President afford to wait? Well, I think uh, this is where the President uh, is expected to walk the talk. You, it is easy for you to say you are going to deal with uh, corruption, and then you have a, a judge saying, based on what I have, and also, well, let us not kid ourselves, there were upgrades that are not denied. There were monies that that they were exchanging hands. And uh, you can't uh, assume that the people were simply generous. There must have been a certain understanding that was taking place. So when this matter goes to court, in court it will be a question of the matter being proved that uh, this money was to benefit you mm. and if, uh, to also to buy your influence. So when you are a Secretary General of the ANC, that's a very powerful position. Uh, you are in a position even to instruct ministers uh, or persuade them. But we also know that the ANC was also able to make sure that certain people get appointed in government. So the influence cannot be taken away. But what you may, the Gwede Mandashe must uh, explain is why have they been chosen to be so lucky that somebody goes out of their way to say, I'm going to do this upgrade at your place. And that will be a big issue that they must uh, deal with. Dr. Carl Lewis, I'm going to come back to you. One of the things that, uh, you know, is very clear when you read the Busasa report, um, Gavin Watson is front and center from beginning to end meetings, the money in the vault and all of that. I wonder what impact is this going to have on this particular report going forward? Because he wasn't there and still, of course, is no longer alive to tell his side of the story. Yes, of course. Um, to say the least, uh, the report actually mentioned uh, Gavin Watson as the so-called godfather of Busasa. Um, but uh, on, on, on more than one occasion, mention is also made by the benefits that the, the Watson family, including uh, his children, Lindsay and uh, Roth, uh, benefited f extensively from the various contracts of Busasa. So, so definitely there is a, there is a link between gained by the Watson family and what was um, uh, the very contract that entered into by Bussata. Um You remember that uh, Judge Zondu made the following remark actually regarding uh, Agrisi's experience, his evidence. He said that every one of the contracts of Busasa was tainted with bribes and corruption. If not from the outset, then at least for, regarding the, the uh, retention or the renewal of those contracts. So, um, and that's over a period of almost 17 years. 
So it shows to what extent Watson family was involved in Bursasa mm. uh, and, and, and the various contacts that, we, that has entered into part of, of, of the country. Uh, Dr. Carl Lewis, we are losing you somewhat there. Um, I'm not sure your audio. Try again. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you now. As uh, we, we, we try then to, you know, move forward with this conversation because we're almost out of time. Let's look at Angela Gritzi. He somehow says that he feels vindicated, but also continues to say that more whistleblowers should be allowed to come forward to tell their story because there's simply a lot more of them. Let's zoom in on him because there is, of course, a case that he's still answering to, to where the courts are concerned. Can he really get off, though, with the title of feeling vindicated because he was also in all of those meetings? And, and, and he does say, though, that there were some of those that he, were not, he was not privy to, and the report also seems to suggest so. Well, you must remember that Zondo's remark was regarding uh, Agrisi's evidence that there was substantial corroboration for the main pillars of his evidence. Um, and he, he, that Dondo actually compared that uh, to Makungane's uh, uh, evidence and basically pinpointed out that although he tried to persuade a less corrupt version of himself, his motives to spill the beans might, not, might have been a mixed uh, a breed of reasons. So mm. it's not as if Zondo at any stage cleared him from any liability. So, and, and I assume the state will try to persuade Agresi maybe to come forward and be a state witness against some of the other perpetrators that are mentioned in the report. And uh, but he's not going to get off scot free, definitely not. Prof, um, as we round up our, our conversation, looking at this report, I mean, and the previous one, we've seen quite a number of, uh, you know, ANC officials really um, featuring in this particular report. But I'd like to ask, um, you know, this of you. The office of the Secretary General, for example, at the moment is unmanned. And now a report from the State Capture Commission, of course, points to some possible, um, you know, wrongdoing as far as the chairperson currently is now concerned. Of course, we heard from him saying that there's nothing that he's done and he's not being linked to any wrongdoing. But what does this tell us about the ANC, especially at a time where you're looking at the top six and pretty much it's not complete? Well, I think uh, what we may say with ease is what the president of the ANC said, that the ANC on state capture is accused number one. What we have, we were putting uh, names of individuals, but the party in its election machinery was getting kickbacks from these uh, uh, companies. So you cannot take away the ANC as a whole and the office of, of the ANC or even the Lutrila House because uh, those monies were also used to advance the interests of the party. But the people who were in the ANC cannot now pretend that they did not know that. So what we need to do is, uh, where was the top six thinking that that money comes from? And why was, were those companies so generous to the ANC to give it money? And they were also aware that uh, some of their members were living larger than their life. They were not living beyond the means in terms of getting money. So if somebody uh, wakes up and the person is an instant millionaire, a member of the ANC cannot say, comrade, I see you have just been lucky. And these guys, they know what was happening. So what we need to also do in as much as the individuals must address and must, must answer to those um, implications and allegations that are made against them. The party itself cannot claim that it is innocent. None of them can claim innocence because they know what was happening. All right. Thank you to you both for your time. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but certainly lots of pages, nearly a thousand pages to comb through um, when you're reading this latest installment that is delivered in several volumes as it looks at Busasa. That was Dr. Lewellen Kerl Lewis. He's a senior lecturer um, uh, in criminal and procedural law at the University of Pretoria, as well as Professor Siposiepe, who's a political analyst.